Hello and welcome to this Dungeon Fog tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at the brush tool which has undergone changes in the uh, recent past. Now the brush tool can be accessed by simply clicking on the brush tool. The interface is fairly straightforward and we're going to work through each of these uh, in the course of the video. Something to bear in mind is that the brush tool is no longer relegated to its own layer within Dungeon Fog. It now incorporates into the room assets of the room in which you are drawing the layer. That's an important thing because now it means we can change their stack position in the room stack and put brushes on top of objects. And you're going to see how that makes a major impact on the overall look and feel of our maps moving forward. So, jumping straight into it, the first thing to notice is that you have your tip size. Now, this is in squares. So, at the moment, if I move my cursor over my canvas, you'll notice that it is a giant yellow square that covers the entire canvas. That's because it's 117 squares large. We're going to have to drop that down to, let's say, uh, one square, and then you'll notice it a lot clearer when I move over. There you go. So, now you can see it's going to fill in just a single square, roughly, as I start to draw. Now that leads me to the tip type. At the moment I have circular tip type selected, but I could also, by simply left clicking, select a square shape and that would allow me to make a square shaped brush. I'm going to work with circular brushes for now. Finally, we have the alignment tab, which allows us to either snap to grid or not. We're not going to use snap to grid for circular shapes, uh, we will use it for square shapes in a little bit. We then have our usual values that we expect to see. We have our brush texture, which currently is set to black, but we now have an eyedropper, which simply allows us to select any texture currently on our map. So if I were to select the grass texture, it would automatically now start assigning grass to the brush tool that we're going to be using. This can be really useful if we are drawing over props. So I've created this Sphinx, broken Sphinx statue prop in uh, this field here and I want it to look as if the grass has grown over the Sphinx. Now because of the way that the brushes work by stacking on top of existing props when I start to draw over the Sphinx very carefully you'll notice that the brush is now sitting over the base of this image and what that is doing is just very subtly making it look as if the grass has grown around the statue. Now I was quite careful, let me zoom in here, to try and avoid the wings of the Sphinx because obviously those would not be covered in grass but to just try and get the edges. Again by playing around with my brush size, let's make it a little bit smaller. I can move in here and add in some grass there and add in some grass there and perhaps just soften up that edge there as well without affecting the wings specifically. I hope that you are also noticing that we're no longer getting the orange lines that we had in the past but now we are getting these bubbles and we're getting multiple bubbles. The reason for that is the brush tool is now creating a single brush layer within our stack. Just to be clear, the stack is when we uh, look at our canvas, we'll see here we have the broken sphinx and above it we have the prairie grass. Now in the stack, if I were to move the prairie grass below the sphinx, of course, that would then hide the brushes underneath the sphinx. That's not what we want. We want the prairie grass to be above the sphinx. Now I can rename this layer to anything I like, but what Dungeon Fog will do by default is use the name of the texture to name this layer. It's also important to realize the moment we started drawing we created some interesting buttons that uh, were automatically applied. We can finish the brush, we can flip it vertically or horizontally as we so choose. I'm going to close the stack for now because what this means in terms of finishing the brush is that whilst I have this current brush open, it's not yet finished, I can create brush strokes anywhere on the map and it will be added to this collective brush stroke. So if I had more objects out here, I could create more circles. And importantly, these are editable circles. And that becomes obvious when we return to the top of the brush tool, where we now see we have the operation of adding or subtracting. If I left click and select the subtraction tool, I can now come in here and refine my brush in terms of the shape that it is because I only want it to really affect the statue. I don't really want it to affect these bricks very much. So now I can come in and edit to my heart's content and this is a really, really powerful function in Dungeon Fog now because we can control the shape of our brushes completely which I think is really, really going to help in terms of creating some very awesome designs. 
we also have our usual tools which is our softness and our opacity now when we are working with the softness and opacity it is important to bear in mind that all i'm going to zoom out by holding down control and scrolling with my mouse it is important to realize that all of the highlighted circle areas are going to be affected by the softness and opacity not just one section so remember the entire brush layer is now being affected by softness and that is quite literally the softness around the edge of the drawing tool whether it is soft or harsh that is something that we have to decide so there you can see it's not um, soft at all and as I increase that softness so it increases the amount of uh, object that we're seeing through I see here there's a little bit of encroachment there so I'm just going to still using that minus tool I'm just going to ink out that just delete that there so we're getting a little bit more detailing where I want that detailing to be then of course we have our opacity now obviously if I reduce our opacity we see less and less of that texture so the softness tool is really really useful in feathering the edges of the brush which gives it a more realistic approach whereas the opacity is quite literally how much of that texture we will see in the areas that are not being softened by the softness tool I think that's a pretty good space to work in it looks pretty good to me I'm now going to finish the brush what this means is not only does it now look like the statue is growing out of this grass but if we now want to start working on a different brush layer we now simply select our brush texture let's change the grass to patches of grass um, so that's going to look like that we're going to leave our softness at about 50 percent and now when i come back here if i'm still working in the circle i'm going to increase this now to let's say four squares so it's quite a large thing and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw grass in here and you see what happened I made a mistake there but it's a good mistake the way dungeon fog handles where the object will be drawn is quite simply the central crosshair was inside this room when I started drawing it needs to be on the outside if I want to draw on the canvas. The central crosshair determines in which area, in which room or on the canvas, the brush will be applied. Once it's applied to that specific area, it will only work in that area as per the normal Dungeon Fog operational procedures. So, for example, if I were to now select this area outside and now I draw my shape, now I will see the grass texture being applied here. Again, it's going to sit over the Sphinx statue because in the stack it has now been created on top. So we are aware of that factor. We can now play around with our softness so we can feather those edges even more or less depending on where we put the brush. So that is something to bear in mind. And of course, we can change the opacity of everything as well and go in negatively and let's change our brush size of course that's what we want to do and sort of cut out the sphinx because i don't think it looks really good having it sort of covered like that we want to soften these out and possibly they wouldn't have that have a pathway there so again this editing tool just really really powerful in working with our brushes to really customize them to the shape and style that we want them in. I think that's a little bit too soft, so I'm going to decrease that softness a bit so it starts coming a bit back in, maybe change the pasty slightly, and I'm going to change the brush size, uh, the texture size, I should say, to 300 to make it seem as if it fits a bit better. All right, now, I did not close the brush, but I have selected away from the brush, which automatically closes it. In order to edit the brush, I would now select the Select tool, and I would click on the canvas, and notice I now have selected the brush tool. I cannot start editing it yet, however. I can change the texture that is currently applied to the brush tool, so I can select a different texture altogether. That looks terrible, so let's select something like that, perhaps, to show that the grass is starting to uh, wither a little bit. I can change the softness and the opacity. Of course, we have our usual controls of above walls, needs a key, is trapped, is concealed. This is interesting because we can now start to draw shapes onto our maps and conceal them from our players. And uh, that is a really powerful function. If I wanted to go in, though, and edit it, I would need to click on the edit button. And then I can come in and once again, I have all of those wonderful controls at my fingertips so I can start to delete and reshape as I like. And then I can click on finish brush and we go back to our original state. So brushes have become really, really powerful. Now, if we look inside this room, for example, as a final demonstration of how the brushes work, we can now start to use our grid brush, which I've now set to one square and snap to grid. 
Now the snap to grid option brings up two functions. Either we are snapping to the center of the grid or we're snapping to the left corner of the grid on your canvas. I'm going to change this texture here very quickly from uh, dirt. Let's change it to stone and let's choose a dark symmetrical stone. I'm also going to change the coloration, the saturation of that brush tool for demonstration purposes. And now we're going to create. Now notice I have selected the square brush tip as well. Now it's snapping to the grid. It's snapping to the center of the grid. So I will now create a very specific shape. This is very useful if I want to create geometrical shapes. Now, of course, the softness and the opacity are still affecting the shape. So I'm going to decrease the softness all the way down to zero. And uh, that then gives us this very, very solid looking shape. This is a perfectly good way of designing dioceses, platforms, stages for within your room. However, if I now draw this outside of the room that I'm operating in, Notice that it will not display the texture, but it will still indicate that there is an active brush section outside of the room. The reason being, of course, is because this is the active room here, not the secondary room. I can go in and delete, of course, this shape here because it is still active. It is still part of the brush layer, but of course, it's not going to affect anything here. I would then finish the brush. Now I'm concerned that this particular texture doesn't look particularly good here. So when I left click on it again, I can go in and change that to anything that I particularly like or think will work within the context of this space. So that might work. Let's just change it down to 200 as we have our normal uh, effect controls. We can also move this around the room quite freely and easily if we uh, don't like the positioning that we originally had it in. So perhaps we want it to be more aligned to the wall. Again, if I were to create another brush tool now and I were to select a different texture, so let's just go with something like uh, moss. I don't know why. Let's say we have moss growing inside this uh, space. I'm going to increase its saturation so we can see what's happening there. I'm also going to increase its size and we're not going to snap to grid because it's organic. Now let's um, change that back to circling as a matter of fact. Still drawing in this particular room. I'm going to do that, let's say, and then let's come in over here and do something like that. We're going to increase the softness so that it's very, very feathered. Let's decrease the size a little bit. Again, the power of this tool. But now you can start to see that the brush is sitting very specifically over the uh, shaped room. What becomes even more interesting is if we finish this brush and I come over to my last room here is we select the above walls option for our brush tool. What that now means is, is it's going to sit over the walls as any kind of prop would do if we had set it over the walls. It now looks like nature is starting to encroach upon our space. That's a really, really different way of designing your rooms, thinking about your rooms in terms of overgrowth and the like. I think it's a, a really, really, really useful trick to be able to do that. I'm just going to change that down so it all looks like the uh, prairie is starting to grow into this ruined space. One thing I have not yet shown you is the snap to grid off center option. So let me do that quickly. And I'm going to select, say, broken stone here. I have selected the square grid. Let's make this again go down to one snap to grid. And I'm going to use the left alignment. So if you recall last time, the alignment was on the center. Now it's on the corner of the square if you needed to do this. And you can, of course, stack brushes on top of one another. There is uh, no reason not to do that. And you can create additional shapes. You can start to create more advanced shapes using this option. Again, if we uh, change to the circle, you'll notice now that we could create some very specific circular shapes as well. Uh, the sky is the limit when it comes to the brush tool. And that is how you use the brush tool within Dungeon Fog.